when you were playing around with these terms and you're looking what the what these tail things look like, mm -hmm. what I don't know how, how what made you think? Hey, maybe I'll normalize by dividing by say the like ln or whatever. Okay. So how, like, how did you go? With, you know. Things like that. So I saw the results. I was looking through the first results. I first, the characteristic I was able to find in the previous results from Otsuka Nakamura and Professor Lu and Xiao. And now you see here that, okay, we have ln here, that ln, it becomes 1 over ln, and also we go from 3 to 1. And I saw that, okay, it pretty much just jumps by 2s in a sense. So I said, okay, and then first, the first case when x equals 1, we start off ln, and then second case, we start off. L3, L2n and also L3n. So I said, okay, this is case three. So maybe I'll try the same thing and try to divide it by L3n. Of course, it took a bit of experimentation at first. I didn't just go, boom, this is L3n. I divided by ln, ln minus one, ln minus two, L2n. And I was able to find, hold on, if I was to follow this example, four with four, three to three, two to two, maybe I can find the expression. And that fortunately ended up working for me. And by experimenting with those numbers, I, I was able to find the coefficient and sort of play around with the ratio. If I divided that by this, if I get like two or four again, I try multiplying with that by that. And I found that if I can play, with, play around with that, I'll be able to find this expression. And I followed the same pattern. And also because it jumps from three, L3n three to Ln and L4n to L2n, that's how I actually divided the second one by Ln instead of L3n again. And that's how I pretty much opposed the problem. How do these big O's distribute themselves. Oh, so In what, other words, you got one square out of four, mm -hmm. and the others are linear. Or do you get cubes too, and four powers? And no, what, like, so, what shows up? What shows up that you've seen? So I found that it wasn't, I didn't really clearly see this as a pattern, but as I, I just ended up dividing with maple, whenever I saw that it was plus or minus and plus or minus, I said, okay, so there must be an error term here that it has to be what do I do to just get rid of this plus and minus sign? Like when I tried to first solve this without the actual O, I was able to find that it was 0 0.000001 and then negative 0 0.9999. I said, okay, I still don't want a negative, positive, negative, positive, all the until the end. I have to get rid of this somehow and have it approach in a positive way. And so I was able to find this. And also this idea also came from the previous results as well. Well, how, how far did you go with that, with the powers? Oh, I went up to case seven. Seven? And then, well, what, what are 5 and 6 and 7? O of big O of what? There you go. This would be the expression here. Oh, still no Q. Still mm -hmm. no O of 1 over ln Q, right? One, one, thing I decided, one thing I noticed was that when I did this with the Lucas numbers, it happened to be a lot simpler than what they tried to do with the Fibonacci numbers. Because I've also read articles, not from Professor o from Otsuka and Nakamura, but previous researchers, they only considered the floor function and they were able to find expressions, but even with the floor function, I found the results to be rather complicated. But, but okay, like I understood that it might be complicated, and I took the challenge and found the Lucas numbers, and I just happened to find that it was a lot more simpler than the Fibonacci numbers, and I saw that, okay, if we go in this fashion, we'll be, although it's gonna get more complicated as you see, it's still gonna be the method that's gonna work until, as long as we're able to find the complicated constants like 0 0.7 or 6, et cetera, if we're able to find those, we'll be able to find the same method of approaching for all S as positive integers. What if you start with other integers rather than Luca, Luca and uh, Fibonacci? Can you still do the same thing? If you start off with different, the first two integers? Different initial conditions. What? From my conjecture, from my conclusion, I concluded yes, because you know, as long as it had this, what, if, I, what I concluded was that as long as it had a similar recurrence relationship, I'd be able to use the same method. Also, that was for Fibonacci and Lucas numbers. Perhaps also we've seen for the hyper Fibonacci numbers. That's how I really started in the first place, assuming that because there are variations that work, I'll find another variation with Lucas numbers. And by seeing that it also did work, I said, okay, it probably will work for the other ones. That's why in the end, I generally want to try to find for the general an plus two equals an plus one plus an, to show that indeed what matters is the recurrence relationship that allows me to go with, with the same approach. Um, so if you had a different recurrence, mm -hmm. would a similar approach work, or do you really have no idea? <laughs> right. Really, as of now, I say that a similar approach works, which I want to find out later. But I say the only difference really is that the characteristic is the same, but as you see in Fibonacci numbers, if you start 0, then 1, and 2, then 1, they may start off with the same characteristic, but the numbers themselves would obviously end up being different and different and different. But it's the same recurrence. Right. So what so if I it say was like that, an is equal to like 2 an minus 1 plus an minus 2 or something okay, like right. that? That's what, I, that's what I wanted to find in terms of an plus 2 equals an plus 1 and an. And, but as of now, because that was my assumption that based off of, which actually ended up fortunately succeeding for me, 
that the variation would work. That's what I hopefully I want to find. I probably want to start off studying more on sequences not other than Lucas numbers and see other variations as well, but eventually get to a general solution for that recurrence relationship and find that what really matters is the recurrence, not the numbers. So, so which stage of your project was Maple used? Okay, so Maple actually was used towards really the middle of my project, I should say. Well, half the project I really went, like well, half the project I was really struggling through the identities and trying to find the identities of what worked. And eventually I was able to find that my, that's when my teacher actually called me. He saw pages of my identities and he said, you don't have to be doing this, you know. And so, I was able to find so, so, so those were like the identity, like L2N equals mm -hmm. such and such. Those results were actually done by hand at that time. Okay. And then, were there other places in which you use maple? Like it seemed like you used at least to conjecture what the what the coefficients I used, were. I used it to actually find the actual expressions because I wanted to see the patterns of the numbers. And eventually, for other cases, I used it for the identities as well. And by using like the previous identities, I was able to find like define them as like side relations and find the next relations easier and easier. Mm -hmm. And I found that just with a click of a computer enter, I'll be able to find the next few identities, and it became more convenient that way. And also for the idea of proof, 1 over xn minus 1 over xn plus xk plus 1. I obviously didn't want to do that by hand as well. So for the actual idea of proof, I actually used maple as well. I defined one xk and yk on the computer and subtracted and found the numbers that are very slightly close to zero. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is probably a, a silly question. But when I hear when I think about zeta functions, I think about the Riemann hypothesis. <laughs> like zero. So uh, that was actually a lot of people's questions. So for this, these zeta functions, has anyone studied where the zeros are? Not really. The, re the main reason why I really wanted to do a zeta function, to be frankly honest, I've just thought that, okay, this is a cool way to name my project, in a sense. In a sense that I thought, okay, it, okay after studying base, a slight basics of the zeta function, I said, okay, it looks like the zeta function, doesn't look like something's wrong with me here. And I said, okay, maybe we can say it's zeta function like. And I, I was careful about it. When I first wrote zeta function, my teacher said, no, this is not a zeta function. And this is sort of different. I said, okay, right. So I'll name it zeta function like because it looks like it, just for the appearance of it. And I actually, but the main project really was the Lucas numbers and their characteristics. A simplification of that question is like, <laughs> can you even talk about things where you go less than one for the output? Well, well, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, well, oh, yeah, we go to zero. So, can you, can you talk about extending it to other values where it might diverge consistently? <laughs> Not quite. Like, the other results, like, for example, like one of the questions that I was asked before, like my New Jersey science for as well, was what if they became, the numbers became negative and negative? Of course, it would, instead of converging, it would end up diverging. So okay, like those are really pretty much the questions. But really, I had to what, what I really had to clarify was that the project really focused on the Lucas numbers and their sums, really, and basing off on previous results of how I can actually get tighter estimates and find better accuracy in terms of how they actually approach the problem. Thanks again. And so please let me.